Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I wanted to use this video to explain how you can calculate the orbital period of an object that's orbiting a larger object. So in this case here I'm going to use like an example of a star and a planet maybe. So in a two-body system, again I'm using a central star as an example, you've got M, so this is the blue M, and if it's much larger than the other mass, so I've given this kind of like an orangey colour, so lowercase m, you've got two masses in this system. If that's the case, then it appears that this second one is orbiting around the other one. In reality, they actually orbit a common centre of mass, but let's assume that the central mass is considerably bigger than the, the other one, which means that the barycentral, the centre of mass, is actually going to be pretty much where that central mass is. Now, if we also know the semi-major axis, which if it's going to be a circular orbit, that is just the orbital radius, that distance between the two objects, which doesn't change. If it's elliptical, then the distance between the two objects does change, but the semi-major axis is just half of the major axis of the ellipse that the orbit basically um, makes out really. So if we know all that information, we can then use Kepler's third law. So Kepler's third law states that the orbital period, T here, the square of that is proportional to the semi-major axis cubed, which is A. Now, I think in one of my other videos or a few other videos, I might use P instead of T for orbital period, but T and P can be the same sort of thing. Just depends how I've written it. So the square of the orbital period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. Now, the full equation then to calculate the actual orbital period is given here. So we've got orbital period on the left, which then equals this on the right. Now, on the right, we've got G, which is our gravitational constant. We've got the mass of the larger object, which is the blue mass. We've got the mass of the smaller body, which is the orange colored M. We've also got the semi-major axis, which is red. Now, it's worth noting that actually, if the mass of the smaller body is considerably less than the bigger one, then sometimes you might find this equation doesn't include that because it's so small, it might be you know, considerably smaller, it makes no, hardly any difference to the outcome of your calculation. So sometimes you might just see GM, or you might see it in this version here, where it's G brackets plus the two masses. Now, if you're doing this calculation, make sure that the mass and the semi-major axis, the units you're using, are the same as your gravitational constant, otherwise you're going to get an incorrect answer at. And also the answer you get for your orbital period will relate to whatever units you're using in your gravitational constant. So the default is likely to be seconds, so your orbital period would likely be in seconds. Now, you'd most likely use it in this form here. So you've taken the square root, essentially, to get the orbital period, so you'd more likely use it in this version here. So thank you for watching and if you've got ideas for future videos then just let me know in the comments.